So today I want to work on a few little improvements in my dust collection system, but I'm not going to be talking about CFM or airflow, or I'm probably not even going to talk about the dust collector that much. It's about a convenience and usability, because if it's not convenient, you don't use it. So first a quick tour, and I've got the wide angle on the lens because I want to try to fit in as much as possible. I have a long skinny shop in my basement. It's about 25, 26 feet long, but it's only 10 and a half feet wide. I've got my dust collector in the one corner. It's a two horsepower unit and it's hooked up to four inch PVC pipe, which runs along the bottom of the shop all the way to the table saw there and drill press and that's where it stops. And it does also go up and over my head and it goes behind the camera to the joiner. Not worrying about that in this video. Problem number one is the bandsaw. This is the front of the bandsaw from where I work. There's the power switch. Here's where you feed from, but as you can see, the blast gate's around back. And so I really wanna move that so that it's accessible from here because with it around back, I often just don't even open it for like a couple of quick cuts. And another thing, which leads right into problem number two, this is problem number two. This is a, a connection here for temporary things. I hook my router table up to that hose and I hook up the planer to that hose. You have to, uh, you have to visualize that normally there's a bench here. I'll throw a picture up of it. I usually have a work table here, which blocks this. So it's a real pain in the neck. So I want to get this blast gate somewhere up more waist height or somehow make it easier to get at. Problem number three is my table saw. Again, kind of kind of like with the band saw, I've got the dust, the blast gate is here and I've, I've been fiddling with it, trying to come up with a little lever control and it hasn't been working. Because like with the band saw, this is the front of the table saw. Here's where I work from, you know, here's this start stop switch, but the blast gates way over there. And actually I have the opposite problem for the band saw. With the table saw, I just tend to leave that blast gate open all the time because this is my most used tool. And that means when I will run another tool, I'll often have two blast gates open, which means it's not getting, you know, truly efficient suction. So I, I, I want to move this. I mean, ideally you'd move this over here somehow, but then, you know, the hose would need to turn around and come back to the back of the saw. So that's no good either. The, uh, as uh, shops evolve over time, the, 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 the dust collector pipe's been set up for a number of years and I think some of the tools have just gradually shifted their position a bit. And so, yeah, the, the connections are not always in the best place for how I use the shop now. So I need to do some adjustments to that. But also I, I am, trying to improve performance. So again, with the table saw, this has a flex hose that goes to the center, comes out the back, runs all the way along, and then bends around to hook up. There is no need for all this to be flex. I'd kind of like to make this whole section rigid pipe also. I still need some flex here because the table saw is on wheels. I do have a small shop. I need to be able to move it. But I think I've been rambling a bunch, let's just get to work. So I think I've had an idea on how to save on some pipe because I want to move the table saw blast gate back to about here. I put some tape on the wall. So you might think I need to cut this and make a coupling or something, but then I was looking around at the other end and this is that blast gate from the bandsaw and I want to move this to the other side. Well, this is staying here because this is feeding the jointer on the other side. So now I've got this here and I'm like, well, this one I want to raise up. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to, at a 45, replace, replace this blast gate with a 45 and maybe put a little short bit of hose. And then I'll be able to have a blast gate roughly at table height. And then I can get rid of this completely. This is all going to make sense. If I'm getting rid of this completely, I have that short piece section of pipe and I have a long section of pipe. And if I swap the two of them, 
I'll put the long section of pipe here and that'll end roughly where I want to put the other section of pipe. So I think, I think I can just disconnect things and swap it around. So let me see. First, get rid of that. Now let's get rid of this. <laughs> so the problem is, is at that end of the shop, the pipe is going straight into the corner. So I can't push it that way. And on this end, we're connected to that. So I can't push it that way. So it's going to be tricky to get this apart. Let me do some fiddling. Here we go. There we go. Just for fun, there's the inside of a joint. Four inch PVC, it's been like that for oh, four or five years. And I never taped it or anything. Well, nice idea, but it didn't work. And I've got six inches short. Okay, can't be helped. Let's get this. That's gonna go like that. That's going to go like that. So, need to cut it right there. Cutting time, cutting time, cutting time. Not sure if I want that. We'll see. Mm -hmm. Now I have a 45 and a little stub of pipe here and and now this will be the new bench top piece with this hose and the blast gate, something like that. Now here, I can reach down and get the blast gate. I think we're going to want like this. Put a blast gate here, be able to just reach that. So I got the blast gate here and then the hose can sneak around back. And once I'm sure of things, I'll probably trim this hose to fit a little bit snugger. And there we go. That's one. And number two is also done because I can might want to cut the hose shorter, but again, I want to I'll be using it and see. The main point is is that my blast gate Blast Whoa, is now at bench height. So now let's talk some more about the table saw. I moved the Y farther along, so the blast gate is even farther from the table saw. What I'd really like to do now is to get rid of as much of this flex hose as possible. I should be able to make all the way out to here completely rigid, and rigid pipe is more efficient, less. Um, less resistance than flex. And I actually, I actually want to move the blast gate also. Um, over here, I could come up with a, some sort of a lever so that I could get at from the other side. That was sort of my first thought. But then um, I was just thinking some more and I think I'd like to bring the blast gate either here or maybe underneath and then I'll hook up either a cable or a rod so that it's connected through to the front. Uh, if you look at uh, Cosmos Bauer, I'll put a link up in the cards or over there. <laughs> uh, Cosmos Bauer channel, he's in Europe and he's come up with a couple of different options where he uses like a, a bicycle brake cable along with a, a, a specially made connector to hook up to his blast gate. And I might do something like that. We'll see, but for the first part, I wanna, figure this part out. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is going to get my uh, 
gonna get my shop vac and clean it out. Actually, I think I'm gonna turn the dust collector on first because there's a whole bunch. So after a bunch of scratching my head and cutting and looking and trying to crawl underneath this thing, this is what I've got and I've put it together out here because it's really hard to see in there. I really only, I, I wanted to just use 145, but I could not get the angle right. It was either, either 245s here, or this would not line up with the dust port underneath and I'd have to have like a, a little six inch section of flex hose. So this is what I decided to go with. And this will fit in here. And it hooks up underneath. And then we have a nice solid pipe all the way to the end. And then the next thing I need to do is cut some flex hose to fit, put it from there to there. And there we go. So I got the pipe fastened along here. I the power cord I feed along the pipe and yeah if this flex hose you think that looks a bit short you might be right um, I, I didn't want to I want to work with it for a while and see what I need because I want it as short as possible but so I do have a much longer piece you know the piece that used to be there but before I start cutting that up I thought let's just go with this little short piece that I had laying around let's try it out because if it works it's good I mean 90 to 95 percent of the time the table saw just stays right there it's just on the rare occasion that i have to pull it out so this might be enough flex hose and if we can keep it minimal we can keep it minimal so it's now several hours later and i've been working on the blast gate hookup for the table saw let me bring you in i've got a good prototype i think so there's three parts there's my my lever there's the cable and there's the blast gate now I have the blast gates actually mounted under the table saw. I just grabbed this one from another spot in the shop. But the main point is that I have a spring on my blast gates. It snaps them closed. This is a brake cable from a surplus bike. It has this little, little bump on the end that clamps the cable. Sheath, a little bit of right angle for the cable. And then here I have this, I was trying to, so the idea is, is that the brake cable hooks up to the blast gate door and then you need to pull it out four inches and back. And I'm like thinking and thinking and trying to think of how best to do this. I was trying to think of something simpler. And it's like, look, I just need to move the cable four inches. And I was looking around and I saw this, <laughs> this is actually an, an old shelf support that's got a little bend in the end. I don't even remember why it was bent, but it was sitting on the shelf with some others. This is actually what the splitter on my table saw is made out of. You can see that video too. And it's very simple. There's a little screw here, so this can pivot. I put a little bolt here and this the nut on the bolt is, is got nice rough grip on it for clamping. And then I have this little stop block, which has got a larger hole on one side and a smaller hole on the other. So the cable, I don't, I don't have it fed through the sheath at this point, but the cable goes through here and is Clamp to the lever and then you move it, get it behind this little catch. It's just a screw and back. And that's, I, I, I marked out about four inches and then I tried it out. And if you're wondering what this little hole in the board is for, it's so I can get to the other end of this. There's, there's, a, there's a nut here, but then I can put my screwdriver in the screw on the other side to help tighten it down. And yeah, the cable goes from here down to the front of the table saw and then under to here. So let me put it all back together and then I'll show you what I got. So here's the controller tucked just under the edge of my table saw right under the fence. And yeah, it's going to be really hard to see. Here underneath the table saw, you can see the white dust collector pipe up at the top of it is the blast gate. The cable is connected to that, goes through this there's a little slot in this board where the right angle is goes through and then the brake cable comes up, curves around to where I have the 
swing arm controller mounted up top. Closed, open, right beside the power switch. I'm hoping it's gonna be really convenient. When you're gonna turn on the table saw, you just first go take it from closed to open and then turn on the table saw. So that takes care of the table saw. I've gotten rid of all the flex hose and I brought the blast gate controls right up here beside the power on switch. And if you're thinking the table saw situation looks kind of rough, you're right. It's frankly a prototype, but I think it works pretty good and I'm gonna live with it now for a couple of weeks and see if it needs any fine tuning or adjustments. I mean, like for one thing, I think the uh, brake cable could be made like an inch or two shorter, but I'm just gonna work with it for, you know, a couple of projects or whatnot, and we'll see how that turns out. And also, once I'm sure about things, I'm gonna come back with some foil tape and tape all these joints up just to make sure it's as sealed as possible so that again, that I get the maximum airflow through the system. But one more thing, in case you hadn't noticed, I got myself a new filter on my dust collector. I used to have this bag that was like four feet tall that went to the ceiling. I got one of these canister filters. It has like four times or so the surface area and it's shorter. And that meant I can tuck this back farther. I have more room above it because you know, this is where I have some lumber storage. And the other thing I did is this hose here where it's connected up to the main dust line, I shortened that as much as I could. It does need to be flexed because this needs to be able to move when I change the dust bag, which yeah, it needs it soon. Again, getting the dust collector as far tucked into the corner as I can for efficient use of space. It allowed me to rearrange this end of the shop a little bit. I moved the bandsaw around and hopefully that makes it, again, more efficient and maybe efficient isn't the right word. So that it feels more useful. Okay guys, I think that's about it for this one. As always, thanks for stopping by and spending some time in my shop. Hey, if you're interested in dust collection, I'll put a link up in the end cards and you can see the video where I brought the pipe over my head so that I could hook the joiner into my dust collection system. But otherwise, we'll see you next time. Take care.